Good morning, everybody. Happy Monday. Hope you guys have had a wonderful weekend. We certainly have. Um, we're coming, I'm coming to you from Marimbula, which is just across the border into New South Wales, seven hours from our home. Uh, and this morning, I thought we'd talk about uh, the business hierarchy of needs. Uh, hey, Viv. Um, I have a beautiful view here. Let me show you uh, from this bedroom, uh, the beautiful Marimbula Lake and the ocean right in front of me. So I hope that my light is coming through nice. Uh, I'm probably even too bright sitting here in front of the window. Um, nevertheless. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to... Um, uh, share my lives as I normally do before we get started into the content. Um, yes, it looks amazing. It, there has not been a cloud in the sky. Uh, temperature's been mid-teens. Apparently, we're going to have high teens later this week. Um, yeah, the view is amazing. Every morning, I'm sitting here drinking my coffee actually from the lounge room where there's almost like a 360 uh, degree view. I'll show you guys later as we finish up the call, um, you know, kind of around, um, around the house. So let me just do um, what I said and then we can get into this the business hierarchy of needs how to triage um, you know the things that you need to do within your business um, and what's most important uh, um, and what to do first uh, and how to prioritize in terms of the tasks that you've got to do I think this is super super important so let me uh, do my shares and then we can get on with the rest of the call. Um, I love doing these on Monday mornings. You probably think, Nat, you're crazy. You should be on holidays. Um, well, yes, I am on holidays and I will uh, finish everything I need to do by 11 a.m. this morning. Uh, but I love to get all these bits done. That way my week feels like there's a new week that has just begun. All right, let's keep going into the other group. I've got three spots that I end up sharing these in and then we can get started. And there are 10 different activities and 10 different things that um, are really important in our businesses to uh, bear in uh, mind with this. Hey, Christian. Hey, John. Can't wait uh, for the workshop. Yes, the workshop's going to be coming from this room next week because we don't get home until next Thursday and the workshop's on Tuesday. So uh, this is my big test about the internet. Actually, this house is meant to have internet but there's no, the internet's not working. So we're gonna to have to try to sort that out with them. With the people, I'm currently obviously on my phone uh, and my 4G Telstra internet is working just fine, but um, we need uh, something a bit stronger when it comes to Zoom um, and running the call, but that's okay. We'll sort it out. Actually, I had Friday night drinks. Hey, <laughs> um, it's beautiful. Yeah, let me, uh, while I do the share, maybe I should have just let you watch the view. <laughs> Um, because we'll get started in a moment. All right, how to do a trash. Okay, let me get my notes up. All right, so after we finished last week's, guys, hang on, I'm coming back. <laughs> we finished last week's 30 day winter business boost challenge, which I successfully completed. Um, I did do all of my, um, you know, the, the extra stretching, the new habit I wanted to develop last week. When we arrived here at 4 p.m. on Friday, I had a massage. I actually booked the facial for this Wednesday as well. So all that uh, reward stuff for doing the 30-day business boost challenge was amazing. Um, and there's some people who are just starting it because they got inspired after the four weeks of hearing us and some of us that were doing it, um, you know, all of uh, June. So it's two days from the end of the financial year which means uh, for a lot of people, it's like time to, I guess, look at where they're at, um, you know, analyze the last 12 months of the results and, and get started uh, into uh, the new financial year with some new goals and new uh, intentions and things like that. So throughout the last 10 years of being in business, um, you know, uh, obviously I'm well known for being super, super organized and um, getting really quickly back to people and all that kind of stuff. And there's certainly a lot that goes into running a business, you know. When you start out, um, you're the only person doing all of those different activities like sales, like marketing, like customer service, uh, admin, bookkeeping, what else is there? Um, there are finances, uh, innovation, um, you know, training of yourself uh, rather than other people you know system set up and all that kind of stuff so all of these different areas are super important to continue to um, 
uh, update, attend to, and um, um, I guess also another big thing is like what we did in the um, June 30 day challenge was to um, look at things to update uh, our build website, social media profiles, as well as to um, uh, declutter as well. So that's also part of business as well. So how do we decide what's the most important thing? So I'm going to give you, I'm going to go, it's like, you know, Maslow's hierarchy of needs in life, survival and all that kind of stuff. This is really about the hierarchy of needs in business and what are the things you need to prioritize, number one over um, over the other things which can come later in terms of your day-to-day -day activities. So good morning to those of you that have joined us. I'm coming to you from Marimbula on the New South Wales Sapphire Coast, uh, which is beautiful, even though it's middle of winter. Yes, I did catch the, uh, the biggest fish yesterday. Stuart caught the first one, which was like this little, but then I caught a salmon, uh, which is about that, uh, that big, and we're keeping it because uh, we're doing fishing most of the day, so I'm very excited about that. All right, so number one activity in your business that should be the first and foremost attended to task uh, each time and every time, and sometimes when you're brand new on weekends or whenever it happens, is your sales calls. Sales calls or people inquiring or people interested in what you do, um, you know, uh, literally in the first four or five years of my business, if it came on Christmas Day, it was going to be responded to on Christmas Day. If it came on, you know, uh, really late at night, I would get back to that person really, really Yes, great fishing, Vivi. <laughs> um, really, really quickly. Um, nowadays, I don't uh, feel the need to like almost like really jump the gun and, and be really super responsive, but really sales is the bloodline of our businesses that are gonna make our businesses sustainable. And when someone's interested, they're generally interested in that moment. People are really um, keen and wanna find out our answers and they might be researching and doing all sorts of different things. Uh, and so if you don't get back to them quickly enough, you're gonna lose that sale. I mean, just um, me, who are, I was getting um, quotes for my decking at, in the backyard, and I was inquiring with different companies to come out and give me a quote, and then um, some would come out and not even send me that quote like for a whole week after they had been. It's like, see you later, like my, that was like yesterday. I'm making decisions super fast. So people are working in a really fast world. Uh, we're, we're living in a really fast world where we're wanting a solution to a problem super quickly. So if you're not there to respond to your um, uh, potential sales inquiries uh, very promptly and very quickly and making the priority. So if something hit my inbox, I've got my normal activities that I'm doing, but if something hits my inbox, that is basically um, uh, an inquiry. I do that first and I put everything else down the, um, down, down the line of uh, priorities. I have what I call my red hot sales uh, book here. And I have, I put different like people that I speak to throughout the time and I mark them with um, a highlight green, those people that have um, converted into clients like, uh, and then I've got the red ones that I've crossed out and they've said no, and the ones that are not marked still need follow up, right? And so this is my job today, this morning I go through my book and I go, oh yes, I need to text that person just to follow up because follow up is the second most important thing to do, right? Follow up, like first thing, do the worst thing first. No one likes, like no one's like, oh yeah, I'm gonna go do sales and I'm gonna do follow up. No, we don't like doing it, right? But you have to do it because that's your bloodline of your business. If you don't do that, none of these other, other eight things that I'm gonna tell you are going to be of any, um, um, well, you won't be able to do them because you'll have nothing to do. <laughs> Right? You need to do the top two, like sales and follow-up. So I've got people here. Okay. Oh, yes, because you don't remember stuff. I used to track stuff on um, uh, on uh, like spreadsheets and all that sort of stuff and see where people are at. But every time you have to open the computer, you have to open up that spreadsheet, you have to find, oh, yes, is there a note there? So now, like a few weeks back, I decided, no, 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 I'm just going to write things down and um, actually go through this book just manually and just remind myself every morning. I just go, oh, have I heard from this person? Oh, I'm not due to hear from them. All right, so I've got about four people I need to text this morning in terms of my follow-up from conversations I've had last week or, you know, that are there in the pipeline, if you like, yeah? So um, start something like that. 
um, and right, and it encourages you, makes you feel like yes, there's something happening. There are potential, um, you know, clients that are coming in and all that kind of stuff. So number one is your sales calls. Anyone that inquires, you respond to them immediately. You drop everything else that you're doing and you do that. Of course, if you're in the middle of an event or a live stream right now, I'm not going to do it. But immediately, as soon as something hits, um, you know, you must. That's what you prioritize. And number two, you're going to do follow up, which is the first thing every morning. You're going to check through your little book and. See see if there's anyone you need to follow up and text or email or whatever it is uh, or ring them up okay number three is your marketing activities your marketing activities so obviously you're not going to produce sales calls and um, follow up opportunities unless you're doing marketing right and marketing includes networking your social media posts your um, email marketing so all of the things that you're putting out there from the first time um, from day one in my business, I had this little manual spreadsheet. Um, I don't do that anymore because I know what I, the regular activities we're doing all of the time. But when I was really, really new, I would have this um, um, one page A4 um, Excel spreadsheet. And I would like go date, marketing activity and outcome. And I would document each week what are the things that I did to put my business out there, to get known by people. Was there an offer that I put out there? So what kind of marketing activities did I do? And not every week you'd know the outcome, but as you go through, that held me really accountable that I was doing enough things. So I wanted to see at least seven or eight, uh, seven to 10 tasks that I had um, actioned to put my business out there to get known and all that kind of stuff. So whether it was like go to this event, go to that event or post on this social media, put out this offer to my database or write the newsletter or whatever it was, all of the different marketing activities. So this is really, really important. In time, hopefully that you're gonna have someone in your business who can take care of those kind of things. But certainly I'm very heavily still involved in the marketing, but Stuart is our head of marketing, if you know what I mean. Um, where he's managing all of the things, um, creating new copy, lead magnets, emails to the database and all that kind of stuff that is, uh, that is, is his regular role that he's involved in all of the time. But that's your third thing you should always focus on and prioritize is that you get out of the house and uh, meet with people nowadays, meet with people online in networking, online networking events. I attended a few the last three weeks and it was wonderful. And I did make connections and things happened as a result of attending those events. So no excuses, you gotta be with people and tell people what you do. Otherwise you're never gonna get to your number one and two priority and that is getting those sales inquiries and having the ability to do the follow up. All right, number four is your customer service. You're looking after your clients and um, delivery of what you have sold, right? So you need to get back to your clients quickly, um, promptly um, do their sessions, do their training, whatever it is that you do. So your delivery of what it is that you sell is um, your next thing to prioritize and to get back to. All right, so customer service, really, really, really important that you nurture and that you haven't just sold someone into your program and then you drop the ball. Like all of a sudden you were super responsive and now you're like, um, you know, really hard to get in contact with. It's so, so important because these guys, these customers are the ones that are gonna produce the future opportunity sales, follow-ups uh, that you're gonna do. So it's part of your marketing as well. In, in, a, in a sense, if you're doing a great job and you are producing wonderful customer service that is uh, quick, like our inbox is empty by the end of every single day. Yes, we don't respond to emails over the weekends, that our clients know that. We all need to be a, li a living and breathing example that there is balance in life and that we, um, we you know, we're not gonna, you know, let it impose into our weekends and when there's time off. But certainly we um, we get, and during Monday to Friday, normal business hours, everyone gets a response on the same day. And you stay on top of that. It's just like brushing your teeth, you know. Um, you do it and you check it and you go through um, and, um, and get back to everyone. So customer service is your number four thing that you must upkeep and nurture and deliver what you have promised to those clients to have signed up with you. Good morning, Mo, and those that have joined 
All right, I'm going through the business hierarchy of needs and that is how to triage your activities in your business. All right, so number five, number five is your bookkeeping, cash flow, your finances. So overseeing all of that. Are people paying on time? Has there been failed payments? Has there, uh, what's going on? Because again, cash flow is king and it is your bloodline in terms of making your business sustainable, paying your employees and yourself and be, making sure that your business is viable so that you can keep going uh, uh, year after year after year. So make sure that you are overseeing that. As much as some people like to think ignorance is bliss, this is the most important thing. And this is right now, we are two days from the end of the financial year. Where are you at? Are you ready to hand your books over to your accountant and see where how you finished up for the year? Or are you um, you know, in a, in a pile of mess? <laughs> Uh, hey, Luba, um, uh, in a pile of mess that you can't work out what, what's, what has really happened, right? Um, you know, we regularly reconcile, we regularly look at reports, we regularly um, tidy up and see if there's any part. Right on top of that stuff, it's better to act fast than to end up with a mountain of unpaid invoices or people defaulting on their payments. It's really, really important, guys. But this is why it is also number five on the list. Really, really important that you're on top of it and that you are managing it and looking at it regularly, weekly, on a weekly basis that you go through, yep, everything's happening, okay, or no, I need to contact this person because nothing beats fast and efficient communication to resolve a problem or an issue. And this is what I always say to my clients. All right, number six, number six is innovation of new products and services in your business. So it's really important that we also prioritize and make time for it. We don't just create one thing and that's the thing we're always doing all the time. It is really important to have some time for creativity and to launch something new, right? To launch new things that are um, going to add value in your business that are going to make it, um, um, you know, what you do uh, uh, more whole, if you like, or um, just uh, more sophisticated, updated. Um, just all of those things are really, really important to refresh and, and um, uh, keep our, our current clients' interest in what we're doing and keep re-engaging them because isn't it so much easier to sell to an existing client than it is to... Um, uh, find a brand new one who needs to build like, know, and trust with you. It is really, really important. So many times this year, I launched new uh, things. Like earlier in the year, I launched the Amazon number one bestseller campaign as an opportunity for my authors. I sold out within days, within days. And um, and now it is a waiting list. So 2021 for this particular campaign for people to um, <laughs> catch up. Yes, Mo. Um, I'll do a summary of the 10 um, at the end of the call as well. And so, um, and so really, 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 uh, important. So now all of a sudden I have got a different product or service, whatever you want to call it within the business. And, um, every time I do a, ma a masterclass for my authors, which is six times a year, I uh, look to create something, um, that would add value on top of the masterclass that could be a, um, a little mini, uh, package that they could take um, take up to it. And Mo, who's on the call today, she would attest to that that she took part in both of those kind of offers this year, uh, which is, which was wonderful, and it was wonderful to see being able to help someone who I've helped in one way with my my initial program, and then they've they've done extra things to um, to continue on um, you know their development and leverage that they're creating with their book. Okay, so number five or number six, sorry, innovation of new products and services. So spend some time. I'm thinking or seeing what people are telling you that they need from you and create that stuff for them. Even the, the um, I guess the pivot from offline to online and creating a whole virtual retreat experience was a whole new service because now we're working with people definitely globally and all of the time having inquiries from all parts of the world about what we do because we can deliver it to them, not just because uh, we're coming to their city. <laughs> awesome. All right, number seven, guys, is team training, ideas, and meetings. Okay, so some of you may not have a team as yet, um, but it'll come. And uh, if it's not team training, it's self-training, right? Uh, going to a seminar or reading a new book that's going to help you um, uh, learn a new skill within your business, master that. Um, you know, so, um, you know, with time, you will uh, impart this training onto your 
um, your people, right, um, that are working for you. So um, absolutely, um, it is really, really essential that you continue growing and developing and expanding, whether you're working on your mindset, whether you're working on a business strategy, marketing and sales, that you're continuing to develop those skills. And in time, it's going to be all about, obviously, training your team in these things as well as them perhaps going to some trainings having regular meetings so that you stay on top of everything that is um, really really important in the business to make sure that your service levels are up to scratch which, bring, which brings me up to number eight which is your system setup okay so now if you've been doing something for a while by yourself and you are going to get um, a, a team members on on board whether it's a virtual assistant a, a different assistant a personal assistant you know someone to, to take care of your marketing or you know email like you need to create the things that they need to replicate that you have been doing so far and those things that you've been doing so far are called the systems yeah step one steps two step three and therefore to then be able to outsource and train the person that's going to help you to take that off your plate yeah in our business, we have very, very clear roles. We have got Stuart, who is the head of marketing, and so I don't have to think really about that side of things at all. I've got Viv, who is our publications coordinator, as well as, um, you know, cust I would say customer service and publications. Uh, Lendy, who's event coordinator, events and publications assistant to Viv. I certainly oversee all of these areas, but I'm not you know, doing all of the tasks within them. My mom is in bookkeeping, right? And postage of products and services. And I would have to say I'm in the sales role, right? Because I'm the face of the business. I do the speaking and I do most of the sales in the business. I would say 90%. Stuart certainly does some, but I am pretty much the person who is in, um, head of sales, if you like. Um, so, um, so as time goes on, as you're able to outsource and grow your team, you'll be able to have different departments, if you like. So... Your system setup uh, will be the, the things that are going to be, um, uh, you know, around and you're going to upgrade over a period of time. Okay, number nine, guys, is your admin. <laughs> your admin, and it is one of the last uh, priorities, um, you know, we've got number 10 as well, that you are going to do in your business. Certainly, admin is important, but can I tell you, so many times I see people prioritizing admin, sitting in their homes, uh, at the computer desk, um, literally just doing um, admin work in uh, key peak business hours. Nine to five, Monday to Friday, is not when admin should be done. You can, you, you certainly can, as long as you've done the other eight things, you know, and by the way, some of these eight things like system setup, it's not going to be something that you're going to be doing on a daily basis or um, team training meetings and things like that. It's, that's not a daily basis, but on a daily basis, you should be looking um, if the, you've got the sales calls and the follow up and the marketing activities and the customer service, and then you've got... Um, you know, um, the, uh, so I would say the, the top four are your daily activities. The next four were something that you look at regularly once a week or once a, a, a fortnight. Um, and then, you know, the, the other ones. And admin is certainly something that is a daily thing. So you, once you've done your top four, you might look at your admin as well. But it is the last thing that you get to once you've done all of the other things and, you know, they're put to rest and, and they've been actioned for the day. Okay, don't prioritize admin as the thing you do first thing um, in your day um, in your business, okay? Because it's something that can be done in off-peak hours. And certainly when I was starting out in business, I would be doing that either really, really early in the morning before I would leave the house and go out networking or really late at night wrapping up all the different things so I could spend the peak hours. You should be with people. You should be speaking to people. You should be connecting with them. You should be um, networking, all of that sort of stuff. Do not prioritize admin. Do not hide behind behind your computer looking busy just because you think you have lots of admin work to do. An admin should be the very first thing that you outsource to a virtual assistant or someone who's going to be your assistant so that you can free up that time to do your top four activities. Okay, and the number 10 thing, which was what we covered off in the 30-day Winter Business Boost Challenge was to update and um, your systems website, updating systems websites and decluttering. Okay, so this is an activity that should be happening every, say, three to six months months. So again, this, as part of the Winter Business Boost Challenge in week one was all about decluttering and updating. So updating website, updating social media profile, updating different um, 
different things that um, have changed and change over time, right? So updating and decluttering, and decluttering your desktop, your computer files, your, your folders within your email account, because I'm hoping that you have inbox zero and all that sort of stuff. All right, so really, really important way of prioritizing what should be done first. And I know that's what we said, that we'll do the worst thing first, the thing you feel most uh, the, the most uncomfortable about, that is what you do uh, first. So let's uh, recap and summarize this top 10 list of business hierarchy of needs and how to triage your way to success for your business. So I've got my list here. So number one was sales scores. You drop everything to do that, number one. Number two is you do your follow-up. You open up your red hot book of uh, leads and sales and see who you actually have like you chatted to but you you may not have um remembered and you can use my highlighter system okay so uh so um yellow just get highlights of what they, where they've come from green is when they've made the sale and they're in and red uh, or, or pink is um is when they've said no and um and that's it <laughs> that's it you move on you have closure right um thanks john um all right so then number three was uh marketing activities so all of the things getting out there and produce the doing the activities that are going to produce the sales um inquiries and um and the need for follow-up number four was customer service looking after your clients and delivery of what you have promised the delivery of your product or service um to your clients so that to ensure that they still love you um, and want to refer more clients to you in the future. Number five was finances, bookkeeping and cash flow, which are ensuring that everything is um, up to scratch. There's no defaulted payments or things like that, that you're following up and you're on top of it very, very quickly. I use, uh, on my phone, my phone's here in front of me, I use um, my uh, app called Alarmed that reminds me when payments need to have come through, especially if it's someone who said, I'm going to direct deposit you or, or, or perhaps I need to charge a credit card and I've got little reminders that pop up at me um, if they're not set up in my set and forget direct debit system because sometimes things like that do happen. Okay, so number six was innovation of new products and services and bringing out new things and being able to sell new stuff to existing clients who are a lot easier to, um, to win over and actually add more value to. Number seven was team training ideas um, and meetings that you need to uphold and um, obviously uh, maintain the standards of your, within your business. Number eight was setting up of systems because if you're on your own and you need to outsource, you need to have the systems in order to be able to teach someone what to do for you. Number nine was your admin work, which is right on the bottom of that list and should be done in your off-peak hours. And number 10 was updating systems and websites and decluttering old stuff. So I would say the top four are done on a daily basis. The next four, um, I would say weekly or fortnightly, you're looking at them and, and um, doing something towards them. Uh, nine is the admin, which again, it's a daily thing actually. And then number 10 is once every six months, three to six months, depending on how much you're evolving. So there you go, you guys. Uh, I hope that um, has made sense and how you're gonna start prioritizing things in case you've been doing it the other way around, because I have seen people do it the other way around and avoid everything everything but to actually um you know do us ourselves and it, it, i mean i didn't mention quotes but if someone asks you for a quote you've had a conversation you and after that conversation you need to send this follow-up email you send it straight away you need to send it straight away right and then what i do is I get my phone and they text that person great to chat to you what i said i'd sent you i have sent you right because um, then they know to look at it. They're still really keen. They're still fresh. The conversation's fresh in their head. All right. So as promised, I said I was going to take you around this house uh, and give you a nice, beautiful view of the Marimbula Lake and ocean. So I'm going to come around. This is my reading chair here. Um, There's a beautiful chair and um, all my bits and pieces. This is what my room looks like. I'll take you around. Uh, let's see what the kids have done um, over here. There they are, they're all getting ready, having breakfast. Um, and there's our like almost 360 degree view of uh, the um, beautiful. Look at how sun sunny it is, it looks like summer. Ah, oh, Stuart's going downstairs. And guess what he's doing? He's doing a sales call at 9.30 a.m. with one of our USA potential publishing clients. There you go, 9.30 a.m. on a Monday morning. Um, that's priority, right? And I've got one at 11 today. I'm going to get off and I'm going to go do my customer service, which is delivering my um, 
Ultimate 48 Hours of Mastermind weekly Q&A. So that's my customer service and delivery of what I've promised to my clients. There you go. So all the, these activities. And Vivi's at home doing, um, also continuing to do customer service, uh, the publication stuff. So she's all into, uh, well, that's her role, right? The main role. Um, and Stuart will touch base with our Facebook people to see if our account will be reinstated because our Facebook ads have not been running now for nearly nine days, uh, which is something that is, has put like a, a little bit of a, a stop or a pause um, on our, uh, our marketing or our uh, paid advertising, which we're trying to resolve. So, um, and as Stuart goes to do his sales call, I'm going to do some follow-ups until my 11 o'clock um, and then I'm done. I'm back in holiday mode so yes it's beautiful up here are uh, we gonna head out where as I said we're gonna do two or three hours being a Monday set up the week and then we're back in our holiday mode and keeping in touch and making sure that Vivi and Lindy are doing okay holding the fort back home so there you go guys I will come back to you for one more week um from this beautiful location next Monday we'll still be here um, and if you have anything that uh, you want me to talk about specifically comment below and I'm happy to bring it to you it always really helps me when someone helps me just with a, a, a topic idea so that I can create the content for you have a wonderful week and as always smash it out <laughs>